Welcome to Dead Bear Code, I'm Sean Beyer, and in this video we're gonna go over setting up an AWS account and implementing a few security feature best practices. It's important to call out that there's no difference between an AWS free tier account and a regular account. They're all the same accounts. The free tier is just a limited number of resources and usage that you can use for free without accruing any cost. But if you exceed those, then you will get billed for whatever you use. The things that we're gonna set up in this video will fall under the free tier, but you, the customer, will ultimately be responsible for any charges that you occur within your AWS account. Knowing this, let's go ahead and set up our AWS account by going to aws.amazon.com. Then we're gonna click this get started for free button here. And that'll take us to this AWS free tier landing page where it'll have more information on what things fall under the AWS free tier category. Again, I highly recommend you come and read over this as well as the documentation to get a better understanding of what falls under the AWS free tier. Next, we're gonna click create a free account and that's gonna bring us to the sign up page. And then we're gonna go ahead and add an email address create a password that follows the following criteria, and then choose a name for our account. The email address and password you enter here are gonna be used as your root user account. So make sure that you choose a secure password and you don't lose these credentials. The root user is gonna have complete administrative access to your account, which means they can create and or delete any resource in your AWS account and you, the customer, will be held responsible for any of these charges. Once you're done with that, go ahead and click continue step one of five. And next we're gonna fill in our contact information. You can check business or personal. Go ahead and fill out this form as well and click continue step two of five. Next, you're gonna be prompted for your billing information. It's not gonna charge you anything right away, but if you provision resources that accrue a cost, then this is the card that's gonna be charged. And once you've finished filling out your billing information, click verify and continue step three of five. Next, it's gonna ask you to confirm your identity. And there's a couple ways you can do this. You can either have them call you and you enter a code that they'll tell you over the phone, or you can have them text message you. Either way, it's not a real person, it's automated, but I still don't like to talk on the phone, so I'm gonna do text message. You choose whichever one you like. Once you get the code, go ahead and enter it here and click continue step four or five. Next, it's gonna ask you to select a support plan. And this doesn't have to do with what resources you have available and what you get. It has to do with the level of support you get from Amazon while you're trying to provision these resources. Chances are, if you're watching this video, you're probably gonna want the basic support for free, which means you don't get a whole lot of support from Amazon. You're kind of left on your own. And then go ahead and click complete sign up, and you'll be prompted with this little congratulations page, and go ahead and click go to the AWS management console. Then it's gonna re-prompt us to sign back in with the root user account, which is the email and the password that we used when we just signed up. So you're gonna click root user, enter your email address, and then click next. Then it's gonna prompt you for the password, click sign in, and now we're inside the AWS console with our newly created account. Now, before we start going crazy and provisioning resources, AWS recommends that we do a little security housekeeping. There is a security best practices page. I'll put a link in the description to this security best practices page. I highly recommend reading over this whole document. We're only gonna cover how to use user groups to assign permissions to IAM users, creating individual IAM users, and enabling multi-factor authentication on our accounts so there's still a lot more stuff to cover within this best practices doc so definitely give this a read through so first things first we want to add multi-factor authentication to our root user account and there's a few ways you can do this we're going to be using a virtual MFA device like Google Authenticator in my case I like to use Authy but that's really up to you which one you want to use and to do this we're going to click up here on this drop down and this gives us some options for pertaining to the actual account and not the resources within AWS. So if we click my security credentials, it's gonna take us to the security credentials dashboard. And here you'll see multi-factor authentication and we're gonna click activate MFA again. We're gonna use the virtual MFA device, so go ahead and select that checkbox and click continue. And then this is gonna be the QR code that once you have your virtual MFA device ready to go, go ahead and scan it. And then it's gonna want you to put in two consecutive codes and click assign MFA. 
If successful, you'll see your little success message and go ahead and click close. Now you should see that you have an MFA device assigned for your multi-factor authentication. And we can test this out by signing out, clicking log back in, root user again, enter our email again, and then we get prompted with the multi-factor authentication. Great, that's working. Now that we have that set up, it's best practice not to actually log in with the root user account and provision resources. It's better to create an IAM user and give it the same administrative privileges and use that user instead. So we're gonna go ahead and create that user by up in the search typing IAM and that's gonna give us the identity access management dashboard. IAM allows you to create groups that you can assign multiple users to and then they'll automatically get those privileges of that group. In this case, we're gonna be making an administrators group that has complete administrative access and we're gonna assign our user to that group because chances are you might have more than one user that you also want administrative access and you can just assign that user to the group and not have to provision the resources directly on that user. So if on the left hand side, we're gonna click on user groups and go ahead and create group. And again, we're gonna call this the administrators group. Here you could optionally add users to the group if we already had users created. In this case, we're gonna create the user next and then add it to the group. And here's where we attach permissions to our group through policies. And there are two main types of policies, AWS managed policies, which are created by AWS that you cannot change. And then you can also have customer managed policies, which means they're policies that you or me in this case, the user, the customer is in charge of managing. So we create them, we can edit them and we can delete them. In this case, we're just gonna use the AWS managed policy that gives complete administrator access. So if we type administrator access in the search bar and you'll see this top one pop up that says administrator access, go ahead and click that and click create group. The administrator access policy gives almost all the same permissions as a root user with the exception of a few. I'll post a link to this document in the description so you can read over what other privileges that you have to be the root user for. One in particular being allowing IAM users access to billing information, which is what we're gonna cover next. In order to create our user, click the users link in the left hand sidebar and that'll take you to the users dashboard where we can click add user give our user a name, and then it's gonna ask us if we want programmatic access and or AWS management console access. Console access is what we're doing now. It's the ability to log into AWS via your web browser and manage your account that way. Programmatic access allows the user to interact through your AWS account via development tools like a CLI, an API, or an SDK. In this case, I'm gonna be doing both with this user so I can go ahead and check both. Next, it's gonna ask if I want an auto-generated password or a custom password. If you were creating a user for someone else, you would probably do auto-generated password. In our case, I'm just gonna do custom since I know it's gonna be me just logging right back in with this user afterwards. And then check whether or not you wanna require the user to reset the password the first time they sign in. I'm gonna uncheck that since again, it's gonna be me logging right back in after this. Click next permissions. And then now we're gonna assign our permissions. You have three options here. You can either add a user to a group, copy permissions from another user, or you can attach a policy directly. It's recommended to try to use the groups as much as possible and try not to attach policies directly to a user. In our case, we're gonna add our user to our administrators group. So go ahead and check the administrators box and click next tags. This part's optional. Adding tags helps you keep things organized. As you work more in AWS, you'll find that a lot of resources can get creative and it's hard to keep track of all of them. And tags can help you out with that. For now, we're gonna skip this and just click next. Go ahead and check everything looks good and then click create user. And there we go, we successfully created our user and it's gonna show us this access key ID and a secret access key. And this is the only time that you'll ever see this secret access key. So make sure you store it in a safe place. If you're creating a user for someone else, you could send them an email here or have them sign in with this link here. I'm gonna go ahead and hit close. Now, before we log out of our root user and log back into the user we just created, we need to add access to the billing info while we're still the root user. 
To do this, go ahead and click on our drop down up here again, and we're going to go to my account. And if you scroll all the way down to I am user and role access to billing information, and you click edit, allow I am access, activate I am access, and click update. Now we're good to sign out and sign back in with our other user. This time we're going to click IAM user. Go ahead and enter your account ID, click next, fill in the username that we just created along with the password that we set. And let's double check that we have billing access and we do. If you go to the billing dashboard and you see this warning, that means that you don't have billing access enabled for IAM users on your root user account. And you'll need to go sign back into your root user account and activate those privileges for IAM users. Now we wanna make sure that we have MFA set up for our IAM users and not just the root user. So if we go back to identity access management and click on users, this is the user that we're currently signed in as. And if we open that user up, click the security credentials tab, you'll see assign MFA device not assigned. Go ahead and click manage. Again, we're gonna do virtual MFA device and go through the same steps to sync your MFA device to this user as well. Finally, we're gonna set up our billing alert. So if we go back to the billing dashboard and click on billing preferences on the sidebar, we're gonna check receive free tier usage alerts and this will notify us when we get close or exceed the free tier usage. But say we're okay with going a little bit over the free tier and we just wanna know if our account exceeds $5 a month. We can do this by setting up a billing alarm through AWS. In order to do this, we need to first enable billing alerts. And we do that by checking this bottom box called receive billing alerts. Let's go ahead and say preferences. And now that we've enabled them, we have to actually create the CloudWatch alarm that's going to trigger the alert. So if we search CloudWatch in our search bar, go ahead and click CloudWatch. The billing metric data is stored in the US East One Northern Virginia region, but it represents worldwide charges. So go ahead and switch to US East One if you're not already there. Now, if we click on alarms in the sidebar, we'll see this create alarm button and click on that as well. Then select the metric we want CloudWatch to monitor, and in our case, it's going to be billing, and then we want the total estimated charge. So if we check this box, that's gonna give us the estimated charges in US dollars, then click select metric. And here we want the statistic to be maximum because we're gonna set it for a $5 maximum, and then the period is gonna be six hours because AWS billing metrics are updated every six hours. So AWS is actually gonna yell at you if you try and set it to say one hour, it's gonna say this won't be set up correctly. So we're gonna leave it at six hours, which means it's gonna check your billing data every six hours. Here you can decide how you want to monitor this. I'm gonna click greater than or equal to so I know once it hits $5, I'm gonna be alerted. And then we're gonna go ahead and define our $5 limit and click next. The next section is what do we want this alarm to do once it's triggered? The CloudWatch alarms have three states. It can be in alarm, okay, or insufficient data. In our case, we want this to be triggered when the alarm is in the alarm state. And so if it's okay, then we don't care, we don't wanna be notified. AWS's Simple Notification Service, or SNS, is a topic that's gonna to receive the notification from CloudWatch. We then subscribe to that topic and so SNS will push out a notification to every subscriber on that topic once it receives the event from CloudWatch. Since we don't have a topic already set up, let's click Create New. Then we're gonna give it a descriptive name. I'm gonna call this one Cost Usage CloudWatch Alarms Topic. Then here we can also clarify which email addresses we want to be notified when this alarm gets triggered. And you can do multiple by separating them with commas. Go ahead and click Create Topic. You'll see that automatically switch to select an existing one because now the topic has been created and it also automatically added our email to that topic. You can also add multiple notifications. I'm gonna leave it at just this one for now. And click Next. And now we need to give our alarm a name. I'm gonna call this one Cost Usage CloudWatch Alarm and a description. Finally, it's gonna ask to preview. Go ahead and click Create Alarm if everything looks good. Initially, it's gonna say insufficient data. 
If you give a minute and refresh, it should update to be into the okay state since our account is at zero dollars right now because, well, we just created it. You'll also notice that this notification up here says that some subscriptions are pending confirmation. That means that the email address that we subscribe to the SNS topic has to confirm their subscription before it will actually send emails to it. So if we check our email, we'll see this confirm subscription and we'll go ahead and click on it. Then it's gonna redirect us to this notification saying our subscription has now been confirmed. So now if we refresh the page, we'll see that notification is gonna go away. And if we come back to the CloudWatch dashboard, we can see our alarm showing up right here, as well as in the sidebar, you'll see that there's one alarm in the okay state. That was easy enough. We create our AWS account. We added multi-factor authentication to our root user and our other IIM user, as well as created a user group with administrative access policy on it. And we set up AWS free tier alerts, as well as a billing alarm for if our account goes over $5. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you found it useful, do me a favor, give it a like and subscribe for more coding tutorials. Thanks, I'll see you next time.